Harry and Meghan's touching moment, adoring Duchess's look of love as the prince holds her hand in Victus Games opening ceremony where he shared their personal joy at her pregnancy. The Duke of Sussex shared his personal joy of soon becoming a father and hailed the Invictus family as a symbol of strength, honor and optimism as he opened the competition in front of crowds of adoring fans today. Prince Harry and Meghan, who wore a Stella McCartney dress and a coat by Gillian Anderson for Windsor London, watched as artists and dancers took to the stage at Sydney Opera House during the glittering opening ceremony. A band with bagpipes performed a rendition of You're the Voice by John Farnham, hailed as Australia's unofficial national anthem, as competitors from around the world filed into the iconic venue. The royal couple were greeted by crowds of adoring fans before Harry took to the stage to praise the selfless duty of the athletes taking part in the contest, which he launched in 2014. Just a few hours earlier. Harry and Meghan were spotted enjoying a rare moment of solitude as the Duke practiced his speech for the fourth games at the empty venue. During the speech itself Harry said, First of all, thank you for the welcome you have given Meghan and I over the last few days. I have been so proud to be able to introduce my wife to you and we have been so happy to be able to celebrate the personal joy of our newest addition with you all. Supportive Meghan took a front row seat to watch her husband of five months take to the stage during their official 16-day autumn tour. They are visiting cities in Australia, Fiji, Donga, and New Zealand. Some 500 competitors taking part in 13 sports, and more than 1,000 of their friends and relatives gathered to watch the Invictus Games. Harry's speech continued, a new generation, the Invictus generation, is defining what it means to serve, and we are all taking notice. The Invictus generation has chosen to serve their countries in conflicts that are complex and dangerous and far too often this dedication goes unrecognized. They have reminded us all what selfless duty really looks like. With the help of medical science, the Invictus generation has not only survived injuries that in past conflicts would have been fatal, but has also chosen to fight back from the darkest of places to be here tonight. They have shown us the true meaning of resilience. When they have been open about their hidden emotional and mental wounds, the Invictus generation has shown us that in today's world being tough means being honest about how we feel both inside and out. The prince added, our Invictus family has become a symbol of strength, honor and optimism for a new generation. The Duke of Sussex told the crowds that the Invictus Games highlights how we should support our mates, serve our communities and to respect those closest to us and those whose stories we will never know. He continued, we have learned to reject pessimism and cynicism. We have allowed ourselves to be inspired and we have shared in moments of hope joy and triumph that have served as an antidote to the narrative of division and despair we too often allow to define our era. You are the unconquered generation. You are the optimistic generation. You are the role models to us all. And you are going to put on one hell of a show over the next week. Earlier today the Duke and Duchess attended the Anzac Memorial Service in Hyde Park to pay tribute to Australia's war dead. They were welcomed by an Australian Army marching band. Prince Harry wore his Blues and Royals military uniform while Meghan opted for a buttoned black midi dress nipped in at the waist. The pair then swapped their formal attire for casual chic to take a boat across Sin the harbor to Cockatoo Island for a special Invictus Games car challenge. They took the private vessel from Admiralty House in Kirribilli where they have been staying as a guest of Governor General Sir Peter Cosgrove. Meghan threw an elegant white white Altus Rocacia blazer, worth about 2,371 Australian dollars over the top of her shirt, which was paired with matching looker denim jeans from Los Angeles brand Mother. The Duchess accessorized with Elastiva sunglasses, worth about $240, and completed the outfit with a pair of Tabitha Simmons Millie heels, which retail for about $1,033. Harry wore grey trousers and brown boots. The couple travelled to the island to watch the Invictus Games Jaguar Land Rover Driving Challenge, the first event of the Games hours before the evening's opening ceremony. Once on the island they were greeted by competitors in their racing uniforms, one athlete from Poland seated in a wheelchair as he chatted to Meghan. Harry put an affectionate hand on his wife's slower back as they walked along the Cockatoo Island jetty to greet the waiting drivers and their support staff. 
thunderstorms threatened to derail the opening ceremony today as the Duke and Duchess of Sussex arrived to launch the contest. Technical equipment was damaged following an electrical storm in Sydney, where Prince Harry is due to make a speech to hundreds of people. I was a bit worried. Thankfully it looks like the sky is clearing now, Prince Harry told Premier of New South Wales Gladys Berejiklian as they made their way into Sydney Opera House for the ceremony. Meghan smiled as the Premier told the couple, there's a lot of people looking forward to meeting you. Organizers took to Twitter to confirm the ceremony as Sydney Opera House would be delayed following the treacherous weather. New South Wales is forecast to be hit by intense rain and thunder in the coming hours. From there they watched the cars go through their paces in preparation for the race to be held soon after, as dozens of others reached over barriers to snap photos of the action. Australia went down to France with its team of retired sniper Craig McGraw, 45, who was hit by shrapnel in Afghanistan in 2012, and mine specialist Scott Reynolds, 39, who served in Iraq in 2003. The competitors raced through three courses, the first getting them to quickly park in marked rectangles the exact size of the car. Then they had to squeeze through posts sticking out of half a meter of water on a complicated track and raced through a course that was randomized with flashing lights. The royal couple also took time out to play with remote control cars alongside children from different countries who traveled to the event with the athletes. Harry appeared to have a barrel of fun driving the cars across the uneven grass off to one side of the course, laughing, smiling, and sometimes gesturing his arms in frustration. Meghan looked on with amusement and smiled at the youngsters who were excited to meet the Duke and Duchess, even shaking hands with one as Harry gave him a pat on the head. The competition turned serious as Harry competed against two boys, one from Australia and another from Holland in a race across a track strewn with rocks and other obstacles. A chuckling prince enthusiastically pursued the boys' cars with his own calling out All right I'm coming, I'll catch you, while sporting a giant grin. The prince was bested by 13-year-old Daniel Jones from Bellina in the NSW Northern Rivers whose father Jamie Tanner, 35, will represent Australia in the wheelchair tennis and rugby events. Mr Tanner was a soldier in the Australian Army who served in East Timor, Iraq and Afghanistan before he was medically discharged in 2016 with terrible injuries and PTSD. Daniel bragged about his victory after defeating Harry who mostly enjoyed himself but looked frustrated at time during the friendly race. Harry was good at remote control cars, but I was better, obviously, Daniel said. Megan was funny. She was saying I'll have a go but I'll crash it over the fence and put it in the water. Harry took the controls and had a great sense of humor about it, too. Daniel recalled that another boy's car knocked over both theirs and Harry's, and the child, Aiden, 6, only put his own car the right way up prompting the Duke to joke thanks for picking my car up, mate, too much laughter. The royal couple were a big draw card for Danlin and his siblings attending the games, along with watching their father compete, according to mum Lisa Kluwak. For months and months the kids have been saying will we get to meet them, Harry and Meghan, and we kept saying you'll see them but you most probably won't get to meet them, she laughed. This is just extraordinary. Earlier Harry and Meghan were greeted by adoring fans as they opened a $40 million extension of the War Memorial at Hyde Park in Sydney's CBD in a surprise appearance. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex arrived at Hyde Park about 10 a.m. on Saturday with NSW Governor David Hurley, a former chief of the Defence Force, and were welcomed by an Australian Army marching band. Harry rolled out his best officer and a gentleman look in the tropical dress of his regiment, the Blues and Royals, with medals, KCVO and sword. Meghan wore an elegant 2,927 Australian dollars black frock by New Zealand designer Emilia Wickstead, a choice that was seen by many as a nod to the Anzacs. She also wore a pillbox-style hat by Philip Tracy and paired it with a matching clutch bag. They were joined by Prime Minister Scott Morrison. NSW Premier Gladys Berejiklian, and Veterans Affairs Minister David Elliott on an overcast Sydney morning. Walking beside Harry as he arrived, and throughout the ceremony, was Governor Hurley, who was decked out in a similar white dress uniform to the Prince's, with his wife Linda in a blue dress and hat. Harry and Meghan were treated to a traditional welcome to country, including a didgeridoo performance by two Aboriginal men painted in traditional body paint 
and a performance by an indigenous dance troupe.